this. So as most of you are aware, I'm a big, big proponent of streetwear and a big supporter of it and somebody who kind of credits streetwear with kind of giving me everything I have now in my career and my life in terms of my interests, in terms of my career choices, in terms of my friends and everything, in terms of the place I go on holiday. It's been one of the greatest things in my life in general. So I'm always going to be fighting for streetwear, always going to be backing it, always going to be sort of like waving the flag. And for whatever reason, it feels like nowadays that's not necessarily a thing that people want to stand behind or stamp. Um, we've seen a lot of kind of prominent designers usually who have come from the streetwear industry or streetwear scene or streetwear field who have now gone on to you know be the head of big houses or gone on to have other fashion jobs and they've kind of gone out of their way to really push away any tags or label of streetwear against them because they want to be deemed to be you know a little bit higher up in quality maybe be associated with something that maybe uh, maybe sort of a conjures up thoughts of kind of artisan qualities and skills whatever it may be and I just personally think it's more so um at admission it's more so kind of lining up to the I think overall industry thing where the industry kind of overall the fashion industry for them for the most part I feel like shun streetwear because they don't necessarily want to see a lot of black and brown faces at these shows um you can credit it with maybe Kanye West and Virgil and everybody else and don't see all those guys arriving at Paris Fashion Week you know looking how they looked with that iconic picture or you can credit it with you know the Supreme and Louis Vuitton collaboration but I feel like ever since those moments happened and there's clearly been a kind of change in what you see and who represents who's represented who's represented and what's representative of the Paris fashion scene in terms of the black and brown faces that is quite evident that a lot of the old guard don't like what they see there especially when you think of the showroom scene that you don't necessarily see a lot in terms of um, press around it but a lot of the menswear sort of like um, streetwear kind of uh, buying and showroom culture thing has shifted all over to Paris. Like all the stuff that used to happen in like places like Agenda and places like um what was that one that used to happen in Germany? Um B something, I forgot, but there were these kind of trade shows that used to occur where loads of buyers and brands and stuff would go to these trade shows to go and find and scout for new brands and new accounts. They've now all switched over and come and do that stuff over at kind of um menswear Paris Fashion Week or sometimes women's wear Paris Fashion Week. So all that stuff happens all often. So you can just imagine the overall landscape of that city changes around Fashion Week. There's different faces, different voices, different looks, different cultures and stuff. So if you're somebody that's kind of really um, a fan of how classes and racist, um, you know, Paris, fas Paris fashion industry can be, it may be a bit of a shock to the system to see people like myself up there leading the charge. And of course, people like Virgil when he's at Louis Vuitton doing the thing that he was doing, clearly, I think, upset some people. And obviously, Kanye doing what he's doing upsets people. So sometimes when I see these streetwear designers who go into fashion, shun the streetwear tag it feels a bit like a blow you know it feels like a kick in the balls because essentially those very same people are shunning streetwear because it's like a dog whistle to them because for them anyway um to kind of get rid of the black and browns and then you're also kind of co-signing it. it's a bit lame but all that to say um i am happy to see that um bali bali or however you pronounce it ba how do you say bali bali let's say bali yeah. let's just say bali bali um a very prestigious and sort of like long-standing house with what 150 plus here year history from switzerland has basically decided to um lend or to kind of take out to, to kind of give control over to rugi villa Snoer, villa senior villa senior i always get his name wrong rugi's villa senior who obviously most of you have known for the brand rude which i would say is quintessentially street where i don't think you make you know a bandana t-shirt and a t-shirt with a flipping you know flip of a cigarette box and not have it be streetwear it's impossible um with everything else that he was doing but you know maybe he would say it was more menswear and that was kind of a starting point but whatever i do think it's kind of rooted the streetwear and regardless he's kind of a young brand um quite a young guy himself so to currently go from what he was doing to suddenly going to lead um you know a house like bali um considering how they've been kind of faltering and considering their lack of relevancy in the fashion industry overall it's a hell of a big job but also goes to show just how important the streetwear voices are out there and just how much of a splash streetwear and that kind of independent DIY do-it-yourself one-man band operation thing has gone and the influence it's kind of given to people and how many people out there are actually looking do you know what I mean there are brands out there legitimately looking and kind of scouring for talent to kind of lead them into a new era of what they're currently trying to do and as a debut go 
as debuts go for the spring 2023 collection i thought he did a pretty decent job in terms of just giving it a bit of a refresh um, presenting some interesting pieces some nice accessories here and there a nice diverse cast of people who i guess a lot of people maybe identify with in terms of the brand and just some nice little decent codes that people can kind of extend with and kind of take on a bit of a journey and maybe kind of keep an eye out for in other collections going forward um you know first collections are always really difficult because you don't really want to go too crazy you want to kind of especially if you're taking over a house you kind of want to maybe follow in the footsteps of what came prior or the history within that brand but you also want to make sure people are aware that this is a new direction you're taking but you don't want to alienate the existing client base that exists there but you want to slowly but surely get your new fresh faces also to kind of be there and kind of be aligned with it and from what I saw overlooking the entire collection like from the tailoring to some of the women's wear to the to the color palette to the cuts in general to some of the fabrications I'm a really big fan of it I thought it was a really stellar stellar collection and if anything this is proof overall that if you have an established house and you give the controls to somebody who's creative but also somebody who can kind of work well within a team you can produce some magic because these guys as a house have everything that he needs in terms of production everything he needs in terms of pattern fact pattern cutting and all that sort of stuff and you know the artisanal stuff and whatever else that needs to be done in terms of crafting these things together and all you need to do as a designer really is kind of do the whole Karl Lagerfeld thing you know scribble something on a bit of paper and interpret it over to your seamstress and get them to kind of you know mock something up essentially that's what you can do with these places that the resources are so crazy so it basically turns into a playground for somebody who basically you know I'd imagine um, Rugi probably was sitting down in his room you know cutting up t-shirts writing drawing graphics himself sending them over to flipping printing factories going to go pick up the samples maybe print screening his own t-shirts maybe pattern cutting and doing cut and sew for his own jackets and shit so to suddenly go from that and then suddenly you got a team of people who are just going to be focusing on buttons going to be focusing on the length of a flipping sleeve and you know stitching and shit it's probably makes it so much easier for you i mean it's probably like the lightest of work when you kind of have a team that can do that for you so it's no surprise that this first collection was so stellar and such a strong debut and also it's no surprise given everyone else that came before him that he was able to maybe learn the lessons of learn the successes and the failures of maybe his other peers in terms of virgil in terms of justin o'shea in the short period of time that he was doing his thing in terms of um matthew williams in terms of what the successes and the bad things that flip in regards he's done at burberry and it's also it's no surprising that he's kind of presented such a stellar and strong collection going forward i don't think is any surprise and if anything this makes me super excited to see what goes on forward um going forward with him um over there at bali and obviously you can see here look 26 is maybe one of my favorites i'm a i'm a, I'm a sucker for a double-breasted suit to be fair and the fact that they've styled it this way and had the model put two hands in his pockets with the front of that suit sort of poking out in a kind of bell bottomy type wide shape makes me think maybe it's actually cut like that so that looks pretty sick i'm not i'm not gonna lie um, this pajama sort of like silk set is absolutely amazing there's some great stuff everything looks like it fits really well the colors are supreme the model choices are excellent great great casting to be fair in it overall um, it's really what's that word called that they like to use in fashion it's really um, what's that word called uh when you desire something um i forgot anyway you know what i'm talking about this pine green suit is fucking beautiful i actually went to wear something like this to a wedding but i didn't end up getting the right one but this is a credible this pine green forest green olive green whatever green that you call that even these two shades of green are really nice actually um you're getting a lot of sort of natural hints and then the sparkle here to hit it off like those two looks back to back and then this coming out after the fact is just brilliant with this kind of gold number it's absolutely beautiful really you know really 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 beautiful even how the photographer's got the walks the catwalk like a legit catwalk look at that the legs crossing over like that it's absolutely incredible i'm a big fan of everything in this collection really really well done and i also like the fact that th maybe this is a weird thing to say but i like the fact that he didn't use any celebrities in the runway i can't be honest, especially with these streetwear guys they do this a lot where they have musicians who they listen to like, i don't know having future walk down the runway it's a bit naff personally to me i'd much rather to hear a future soundtrack maybe a track that he produced specifically for the show right that would make more sense or maybe him doing a live performance like playboy kai rain i don't know what show he was doing where he was performing um running down the runway but to see models 
play artists you know as models i don't really like because i'm not i mean i just think it's a bit naff get actual models to model your show and make it look amazing and then have the soundtrack be whatever artist you want so i'm, I'm glad he didn't really go for that and just opted for actual legit you know bona fide models to kind of walk down the runway um it kind of gives it a bit of a uniformity um kind of just makes it really feel like it's like kind of make it feel somewhat regular like he's been there a million years already. Right? I mean, that's what it kind of feels like. It feels like he's just, you know, he kind of, it fit like an absolute glove, this kind of his relationship um, with this house. So that looks really, really awesome. But the interesting part of it, number one, I thought was this article here, um, courtesy of um, GQ. I thought this was hilarious. Um, especially when I talk about the whole idea where I think like a lot of these people, him included, I think as he made a comment on the article with Vanessa Friedman, how he basically didn't like the term streetwear and thought that it kind of didn't represent him well. And it was sort of like a thing that kind of essentially kind of was a, a way to sort of like talk down upon him and what he does and blah, 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 blah. But it was funny to see in this article that he also mentioned it again, how he doesn't like the term streetwear and thinks he does more than that. But in this GQ article, the person who they spoke to from Bali or Bali, however you fucking pronounce it, um, basically said the reason why they identified him as somebody who could succeed at the house was because he was a disruptor, somebody that does something different, and also because of his ability to kind of balance between contemporary, I think, menswear and streetwear. That's essentially what they said. So they identified him as streetwear, but he doesn't identify himself as streetwear, even though they basically gave him the job because he does streetwear and he can do the formal sort of like menswear type stuff i'm gonna actually get the quote here so you can actually read that it was absolutely hilarious it says here um not that you'd expect a designer frequently filed under the category of streetwear a term whose second-rate fashion connotations he explains can carry racist undertones it's about audience he frowns at one point ruigi was it Spencer or was it ruigi ruigi shows me pictures of some new inspirations and european road sign spotted in his travels he says if i make streetwear i'm going to make what you see on the street which you know well i get it whatever but the funny thing i say about this is that in my opinion opinion again it's all opinions in my opinion i think when people say like especially journalists like Vanessa friedman say oh the return of tailoring and whatnot and people say they don't want to see streetwear in the fashion industry or they don't want to see jeans on a runway or hoodies to me i feel like those are dog whistles those are like people who don't you know don't have balls to say what they actually think where they actually don't want black and brown people on the runway. Like, there's too many blacks, there's too urban, um, there's too many trainers, which I think, again, is dog whistles, um, maybe too much hip-hop, but the, the, the soundtrack was too loud, not a DJ, have action score, all these things that kind of harken back to traditional um, classes sort of views of what fashion shows should be like. It shouldn't be like a, like a performance. It shouldn't be all out there and stuff. It should just be about the clothes and about proper models, a particular kind of look, and everyone has to be skinny. Everyone has to look a certain way, blah, 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 blah. blah. I think for me, those are dog whistles to the teeth. So the fact that he thinks streetwear is a way to kind of make him feel less than and has racist connotations, I also think them saying to you, um, that they don't want red street where it's also racist. You know what I mean, it's a double, it's a double edged sword in that way. But then obviously the person that runs it or that was kind of responsible for getting him there, who's this person here, this quote I thought is hilarious. Um, through the top of it, it says, but why would the heritage brand turn to an independent LA startup designed to guide his future? Because he's different, says Nicholas Girotto, the CEO of Bali, who frequently pushed for the hiring of Ryugi. So one person in that company who maybe stumbled across his brand, maybe saw it in a flipping department store, maybe likes it as a brand overall for his journey, was fighting for him on the inside because of his streetwear roots. And it says follows, who had already shaken things up with his company by choosing sustainability commitments and an overdue e-commerce push after his appointment in 2019. He said, Ruigi was one of our, or was on our map for what he was doing with his own brand, but also for his balance of contemporary streetwear and luxury sensibilities. Right there in fucking HD. So the same thing that he thinks is racist is the reason why he's hired, which must be a bit of a bitter pill to swallow in that regard because, you know, they're hiring you because you're different. What does that mean? Does that mean they're hiring you because you're not white? And they're also hiring you because you do streetwear and, and luxury sensibility stuff, menswear, really well. 
it is what it is. When he started the designer spent hours integrating values um, I just learned about his craft growth I said in choosing the creative director for a 170 year old brand I wanted the person who would disrupt and we also really give a possibility to bring the brand in a new direction. He's someone who has a direct dialogue with his audience and through his dialogue he gets a good sense of where his society is going. But yeah, the the, the shoot the, the, the cover story itself is really good or the, cover, or the feature story itself is really good. I really recommend you check it out. He's dressed to the ninth. He looks really incredible and then you also find out that he's a flipping single dad with three kids super powerful filipino energy in that regards but you know he seems like a super young dude with three kids and he's single and he's flipping running but um rude he's running the brand thing he's got the collaboration he does with zara then he's got obviously the the bully thing like this guy is absolutely working like an absolute animal do you know what I mean really really amazing work ethic um clearly somebody incredibly smart and actually the issue the funny thing is about this is that i actually spoke to him once uh, we met very very briefly maybe it was paris fashion week i think around the time that i was kind of um helping to co-produce the streetwear course that i was doing with virgil who was kind of the, the lead curator of that thing and i kind of you know had him down as somebody that i thought would be a good um kind of mentor to have on a program maybe he could kind of offer advice to some of the up and brands and kind of just speak on certain things and just be somebody that we can maybe use as a resource and i kind of pitched it to him and he kind of big time me i think when i spoke to him like he kind of like yeah yeah we'll talk about something whatever it may be but he was really nice and kind of courteous and kind of gentle about it whatever it may be and polite but i basically got big time and basically got node he may have to do with he didn't want to be associated with virgil maybe he had to do because he didn't want to move it things around. i don't know what the, what the thing was but since then and seeing him be around the likes of what's his name swiss beats and jay-z and shit and all this stuff and he's around other big head people i think there's a picture of him with flipping jack dorsey from twitter and all that shit clearly he's somebody who's very good at being um a people person he's very good at politicking very good at moving around the industry and navigating because you know he's for, for somebody who basically makes what he makes he's kind of elevated his kind of stature just on how he kind of carries himself so it's no surprise that he was very hesitant about getting involved in something that I was proposing like that online streetwear program because he wasn't you know he's never really been comfortable I guess with the whole streetwear thing anyway from minute one considering what he's saying so maybe that was part of his reason but I also kind of make want to make a point about how important it is to be really kind of laser focused and kind of clear on what you want to do and what you want to represent even when you start because you never know what those little things could end up those little seeds could end up kind of growing into later on down the line you know because you, you, you know you can end up getting behind one thing just because you wanted to get behind at the time and then suddenly you can't shake it so maybe that was part of the whole reason why he was very kind of like intense he had like kind of a long 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 term plan like he kind of, he kind of reminds me of uh, samuel ross in that regard um they're very kind of strategic very long-term thinking it's bigger than what they're doing now um it's something that they kind of want to pass on to others something they want to inspire others just to go and do and see um because if you're kind of if you're a filipino person coming up and you see someone like him doing what he's doing and smashing it on this level it's impossible not to feel inspired and feel like you can do it too especially when you read about his humble upbringings and whatnot so clearly he's doing good things and doing amazing things like i said i'm really impressed to see what he's doing there so far as collection one um over there at Bali, considering what they had prior it's fresh it's new um it's kind of reawoken the brand a little bit and again they're showing this if i'm not mistaken at milan fashion week which is generally meant to be one of the worst fashion weeks out there in terms of overall quality and newness and freshness and the fact that they've got him out there doing what he's doing i think is great um you know it's going to bring some freshness to it he's going to have some interesting people sitting on front row cool interviews nice after parties just to kind of reinvigorate the city a little bit on the back of obviously some cool up and coming young designers too but it's nice to have an established person out there doing some cool things and obviously there at the end he's dressed to the ninth looking absolutely amazing with the flipping chelsea boots on and a suit that looks like it's it's legitimately printed onto his body how can fucking tell it is so big up him big up him big up big up him